Welcome everybody. Um, it's a great pleasure um, today to be able to host this masterclass with um, director John Wu at the 26th edition of the Fantasia International Film Festival. Um, before we start, I just wanted to kind of um, take a moment to thank all of you uh, for being here and for being with the festival. It's been a hard couple, two years, and it's been really special for us to um, see you all again and to see that energy again. Thank you. Um, we've said it, and I'll say it again. Um, without John Wood, there would not be um, Fantasia um, at all. Um, his um, his unique sort of directorial approach has had such a lasting impact, um, not only on uh, action cinema, genre cinema, but just cinema in, in general. Um, as you all know, his style is instantly recognizable. The way he stages a scene, the way that he um, moves through a scene, conceives of action. Um, his camera choreographies are always intricate and uh, fascinating to watch. Um, his mastery of physical performance, his sense of rhythm is instantly recognizable, um, as are his sort of, uh, you know, fun little stylistic flourishes that we've grown to love, whether that's slow-mo or doves um, and all of that. Um, of course, his films are not just that. Um, they're built around really interesting themes of, interesting moral themes of, of loyalty and brotherhood, um, even if that means um, John Travolta and Nick Cage, you know, going at it. Um, you know, this is something we'll get into, but, um, you know, following, you know, martial arts uh, films and comedies that he made in Hong Kong back in the late 70s, and you know, films like such as Hand of Death, uh, Last Hurrah for Chivalry, um, things like Money Crazy and Plain Jane to the Rescue, which are, you know, beautiful, um, sort of underseen, underrated comedies that I really encourage you to seek out as well. Um, as we know, he kind of really made his name um, as an action director, you know, starting with A Better Tomorrow and The Killer and Hard Boil and all those films. Um, what we've come to sort of know as the heroic bloodshed uh, genre that he pioneered. Um, of course, this was followed by a very successful um, Hollywood career that gave us the Jean-Claude Van Damme vehicle, Hard Target. Um, the For My Money, the best, I know this is a maybe controversial statement, but For My Money, the best Mission Impossible uh, film, Mission Impossible 2. And of course, the classic face-off um, that you'll have a chance to see tomorrow on uh, 35 millimeter in the Deset Theater. Um, this was followed by um, a return to mainland filmmaking uh, with Red Cliff and The Crossing, um, great grand scale epics um, that you know, I'm sure we'll discuss. So to discuss all that and much more, please give a very warm welcome to John Wu. Thank you so much, and I, uh, I have to apologize for being late for a few minutes. So, uh, uh, how are you? <laughs> 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 it's, uh, it's a nice to be here. And then uh, the one thing I have to declare is that uh, I'm not a master. I'm just the uh, same as you. Uh, we have no different. Uh, the movie lover. I'm just a lucky one. I'm just uh, got lucky enough to direct so many movies, and then uh, and I'm so I, I was so lucky to have my first time when I was uh, 36 years old. Uh, I was the assistant director for a great master called Chang Chit, and all of a sudden a friend of mine. Uh, got the uh, support from his best friend, and his friend, which, is, uh, which had made 
a lot of money in the stock market. And then he just wanted to, and, and then he was deeply fascinated about a, uh, a, a, a very beautiful movie star. And he just tried to, you know, uh, have a chance to, uh, to do something with, with that movie star. And then at the they gave us money, gave us money to make a movie, to hire her to make a movie as, as, a, as a major role. And then, uh, so we got a very little money, about 50, about 500, uh, uh, 500 uh, million dollars. So, so uh, which was a low budget kung fu movie. So we hired her. And then we made a movie, uh, but my friend didn't know how to direct it, so he he asked me to direct the film, and then I, and then I oh, but I wasn't ready yet, but I, uh, but I like to take a chance, so I uh, so I made the uh, at last I made the movies and then, uh, 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 and the movie. Have so much problem, you know, and uh, and uh, the movie was banned because of a violent issue. And the movie was too violent, <laughs> and then uh, yeah, I, that was in 1973, just at the year of uh, the death of uh, uh, Bruce Lee, my idol. Um, after the movie banned, and uh, so. The investor a total loss, and he didn't get the access, and he didn't get the access to what he wanted. <laughs> so it was a fair, and then uh, then we sold the movie to Golden Harvest. Uh, the Golden Harvest, which was uh, produced, put these movies, and the boss, and he loved the movie. He loved. And he loved, there's something special uh, in a movie. Is a, he like, he liked the way, I, I was making the, uh, the drum machine. All the drama, um, uh, uh, not the action, but, uh, uh, not about violence. Uh, uh, there's some, some little thing he likes so much. They are. Uh, the thing you like is, uh, uh, there was a scene as uh, uh, there are two lovers, uh, they are separated in two different places. But in somehow, even though they are uh, separated, but their heart still together, you know. And uh, they, like, uh, they, are, they were missing each other and thinking each other, and then somehow I was using a a little technique. So when I shot uh, uh, the woman, she walking down the stair, and her hand uh, uh, getting to touch the rail, and then I jump cut to the man on the other side doing the same action and continuing uh, uh, his hand and grabbing something. The hand to hand, and then uh, from anyway, they kind of an intercut emotional action. They like that. I mean, it, it was very rare to see that kind of technique in a uh, very commercial uh, action movie, and that kind of technique it was came from. When I was uh, much younger, uh, to make an experimental film, it, uh, it was came from a, a one of my uh, experiment technique, and I used it into a kung fu film, and it worked, and it worked so much. So and uh, so, so the boss liked it so much. And then he gave me the three years uh, directing contract right away. 
and 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 uh, at that time I was poor. I didn't have, I have no place to sleep. I just uh, could uh, sleep in uh, uh, my friend's uh, office, you know. <laughs> so and then, uh, so that uh, how I started the directing career. So don't look down what you did now. Don't look down uh, uh, what you have like uh, some. Uh, uh, making short film or making uh, experimental film, you know, everything is useful in the future. Like Alfred Hitchcock has said, every of his movie is a new experiment. Yeah, he ne uh, never stopped to experience some new thing. So uh, I'm, uh, I, I get the luck. I'm sure you also will get the same luck. Yeah. So, uh, okay, maybe <laughs> I uh, talk a little too much. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, by the way, so I'd like to exchange uh, the experience of what we both have. You know, I don't, uh, I have no theory. You know, I just, anyway, so. We were casually talking. Okay. Was that the movie you mentioned? Was that the the Dragon Tamers, your first feature, or was that Hand of Death? No, no, no. It was the uh, uh, the Young Dragon. The young. The Young Dragon. The Young Dragon. Yeah. Uh, but the original name was uh, the uh, Farewell, Farewell, My Friend. Right, right, right. Yeah. Amazing. Um, so you started, as you said, um, directing martial arts films um, for Golden Harvest. Um, and you're also sometimes credited as um, having helped, uh, for example, Jackie Chan uh, break through. Um, I'm curious to hear a bit more about that era of Hong Kong cinema, um, which I think for a lot of fans is still a little bit unknown in the West, right? Uh, this idea of uh, the Young Dragons, um, Hand of Death, for example, with Sammo Hung and Jackie Chan and Yun Bu. Um, these films are really interesting, um, um, the sort of early work, and I wonder if you could maybe talk a bit about, um, and then you know, going on from that period into working with under Chang She as an assistant director with, um, I think it was Godfrey Ho as well, um, was working with you. I'd love to hear about that. Uh, just, uh, I need to uh, talk about a little hi uh, history of myself first. Uh, you know, I, uh, um, when I start uh, learning film, I, I was only 18 years old. You know, I love the movies, and I have uh, got a big influence from the French New Wave. Uh, and I, I, I was so crazy about Jacques Demy, and uh, and then later François uh, uh, Truffaut, uh, uh, Jean Pierre Melville, and uh, I am. They kind of a movie lover. I'm. I'm not. Uh, I didn't pay much attention of the uh, 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 the kung fu film. You know, even though uh, my master was a uh, great martial arts director. You know, I just worked for him. But I. Uh, uh, but I'm. Uh, didn't crazy about it. What I love was the French film. I'm crazy about the French film, but they are not crazy about me, you know. <laughs> so I have been trying so many years till now, so I had to make a French film, but nobody asked and no. Uh, and, I'll, 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 and, I'll hook uh, you up. And uh, <laughs> nobody uh, uh, interested to in, uh, uh, give me money, you know. I know. Anyway, I. Uh, they knew, they know I, uh, I, I, I'm a French film lover, you know. I, you know they, they knew I'm a, uh, uh, you know, the um, uh, uh, sort of like a champion with a uh, furniture uh, student, you know, something like that. <laughs> anyway, so when I, when I became a uh, director I, uh, for Gordon Harvard, I really talked with him. My idea wanted to make a movie called uh, uh, make a movie like *The Samurai*, uh, and the boy say, "What? What movie? *The Samurai*?" 
which was directed by uh, uh, Sean Pierre Belvilles and uh, and uh, starring Alan Delon. He said, "Oh, John, uh, we don't understand what uh, what is all that." Uh, you just yeah, you just make it what the markets need, you know. The market, the film market was a, uh, it had a term, you know, like say, uh, that the best selling movie is called a Pillow and uh, the, the Feast and the Pillow. The Feast, you know, means Kung Fu. The Pillow means sex. <laughs> so uh, only Feast and Sex. Uh, can make so uh, so. What should I do? I, uh, I, uh, I, uh, that's what I learn learn from. I, I, so I had to. Then uh, of course I choose uh, you know the fish. Uh, so that's why I uh, promised that uh, I'm to start with a very low budget uh, film uh, called uh, uh, Selim Selim. Temple, you know, a kind of film. And then uh, I, uh, I picked up Jackie Chan as my uh, stun, uh, one of the stun guys. Uh, he was so young, he was about 18, 19 years old. And then Sam Ho as the action director. And a bunch of young kids. And then uh, we were shot in uh, Korea, which just saved a lot of money. And so, that, uh, and then I encouraged them to do some experiment as well, or to do like a, to create some new kind of action and, and using a cable, you know, uh, pulling a guy and when he, when he kick his uh, uh, stomach and, uh, we, and, and we pull him a high, it seemed like uh, to emphasize the, the kick uh, the, that uh, looks like more powerful. Anyway. And then, uh, but the one of the shots, uh, Jackie Chan was a stand double, and then uh, uh, he doubled for the big guy, and he uh, he jumped up uh, from a chambering, and then uh, our main character gave him a hard, very hard kick in his stomach. So we were using six men to pull uh, Jackie Chan back, to make him land on a, a, a Land on the ground, uh, back wall. So and he, and, uh, and and the back wall, they had they almost hit the rock. This this a rock uh, like uh, this shape uh, uh, on the, uh, on the ground, and and his head almost, almost hit it, 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 hit it, and and he um, but he lost consciousness and he didn't know. And I, we, we shook him up and slapped him, <laughs> and, and then uh, we we all crying, we were crying, and then uh, uh, and then after uh, after a while, and he woke up and he asked where I am, <laughs> what I'm doing, and, and he forgot everything for a moment, and then we hugged uh, 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 together, and then uh, we all cried. So it was. So I think uh, uh, if he's in China, uh, in Chinese, uh, if uh, if you are there, if you are not there in a big disaster, uh, you uh, you're gonna be uh, uh, you're gonna be doing great in the future. You know, you, you're gonna be have a great fortune or something like that. Uh, so uh, so since that, uh, Jackie Chan. And I found him, uh, he was so uh, funny. And by the meantime, uh, his, uh, uh, his action was so quick and uh, he, was so, he was so brave. And then I, I highly recommend to, uh, to the studio and to try to hire him. But the studio was a little uh, uh, cheap, you know, that didn't pay him enough, so he didn't. But later he, uh, and I thought to the studio, he will be a big star. Please sign him. Uh, at the beginning, they didn't believe me. Mm -hmm. And later, when he become, uh, when he become famous, become, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, more important, and then the studio turned out, uh, 
Anyway, we have a very good relationship, and then I'm so happy to uh, be getting uh, better and better and, and more famous. And so during that time, I mean, before, I think, you know, Jean-Pierre Melville's Le Samurai is, I think, a, a great reference point, and I'd like to get back to that because I feel like that idea was simmering in your head throughout that whole early period of your career of wanting to make a gangster movie um, that would eventually become a, a better tomorrow. Um, however, I think before that, um, you briefly became known as a master of comedy in Hong Kong uh, to the point where um, for a brief period there, the name John Woo was closely associated to, to comedy. Um, what was that like for you? Um, well, there was the thing. You know, I, uh, I liked friendship. I liked uh, helping people. I, I, uh, I always, this I always do, you know. And uh, when I was a kid, and, uh, I'm, I'm a very sincere Christian. Yeah. Uh, now I'm still a Christian. Uh, 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 but it uh, doesn't go to church, you know, anymore. <laughs> anyway, they, uh, so I, I'm educated from the, uh, I have the Christian uh, education, and then I, uh, uh, You're, you were raised that, that, how I learned, that how I learned, you know, you know, help your neighbor, help your friend, your, your brother and sister, you know. And, uh, so when uh, I, uh, I, by the meantime, uh, I, Really, a uh, great admire the people who have uh, better talent. Uh, I mean, better than me. You know, I should not uh, have a, a special talent, and uh, 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 they will uh, uh, have me the uh, great respect. You know. So, uh, when I uh, become a director, and uh, since this, uh, uh, I couldn't do what I want because you know. The, and then uh, I have met a very good friend, uh, Sam Hoy, uh, Samuel Hoy. She was, uh, uh, he was, uh, uh, he is still a, a very popular singer, you know. And, uh, and his brother, Michael Hoy, uh, wanted to direct his first movie. That was in 1976. He was his uh, first movie, and then he had never learned uh, about directing, so. Uh, the uh, uh, the his assistant director, which was a uh, uh, experience, have a lot of experience, uh, uh, you know, uh, famous director, but that uh, that assistant director kind of like have a kind of attitude, is uh, and uh, and and. Uh, didn't uh, cooperate much and uh, and even lock him down. And, uh, you didn't know how to direct and why you become a director, you know? Because in old time, everybody, uh, if uh, if you want to be a director, uh, first of all, you have to serve it as a script or supervisor. You have to do 15 of 30, 20 years of supervisor and then you got a chance to promote your assistant director. Uh, uh, if you work uh, to uh, uh, 20 years as the assistant director, then you are qualified to become, to promote to a uh, director. So uh, his director uh, came from that way. So he, uh, he had been spent 40 years in, uh, as an assistant director, but never have a chance. But Michael Hoy, all of a sudden, yeah, he he didn't learn anything. He says, well, uh, direct, but he's but he's a very talented, very clever, and uh, and uh, I think pretty sense of humor, and and, uh, and he's a good human being. And then, uh, and the studio wanted me to help him, wanted to help him, and then. Uh, I said, uh, I'm, uh, I'm preparing a uh, script, and I want to do it. You know. Okay, but I'd like to meet his friend. And then uh, when he, so because I'm a friend of his uh, younger brother, Sam Hui, 
And then uh, so uh, one day I uh, I came to uh, uh, see him in a studio, the screening room, and then uh, he was just came from uh, came back from Macau for for the location. Uh, wanted to see the uh, the verses. I mean the uh, yeah. So and then I I went to him, and then he just say two two words. John, this is the ticket to Macau. And, and I do wish you can help me to finish the scene. Because the scene was uh, shooting in a real casino. It's a, it's a very um, uh, uh, uneasy uh, to, to get it. So, uh, and I overheard, you know, that they, uh, they, uh, uh, the assistant director didn't uh, treat him well, so and then and then he at uh, the second time at uh, the second word he said is that my wife uh, got the uh, what kind of a uh, uh, pregnancy, but the the baby is dead, uh, is already dead uh, inside, so I should go to the hospital to see my wife first, uh, but I'd rather, uh, coming back, like to see the, foot, the footage, because the work uh, also is very important to me. Oh, I was very touched. I said, I, I, uh, I, I accept the ticket. I said, you go to see your wife uh, first, and I will, no matter how, no matter what, I will help you to Finish the movie. So I, uh, I was so touched by a man uh, uh, loved the movie so much, and also is a great family man. So I help him uh, almost, and I help him, and also uh, teaching him how to direct uh, uh, the scene. He said, I'm asking, uh, so, so uh, he wrote his own script, and, uh, you know, one by word, I said, okay, uh, you want him to talk, and you want to take a shot, okay. And actually, all you need, all, all, you, uh, uh, all you want to need to shoot is same as your, what, what you, 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 you already wrote it on the paper. It is all the shot, it is all the shot here. Believe in yourself. You are great. You are, yeah, 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 you know. And then uh, it, it, it worked out so fine. So I executed for for him, and then uh, helping him to arrange uh, the, the everything. And he uh, he had, he gained so much confidence. So, and then uh, after I worked with him uh, the, uh, for the whole film, and then uh, we uh, uh, we. Sometimes you work together in, uh, you know, uh, to uh, create uh, some, you know, the kind of uh, the uh, uh, the jokes and the, and the uh, com and I also have learned so much uh, the uh, comical thing from him, you know. So he's a great talented man, and then uh, uh, we work together so well. And actually, I sh I shot most of the scene, yeah. For him. So that was. Um... And then after that, after I have him, and the movie got a big, big hit, and it broke all the record. And then uh, he was so happy, and she was still so happy, and then he asked me, and then, uh, you know, when I like to help somebody, uh, you know, I didn't ask for anything. I didn't get. Uh, a penny uh, for, the, for, the, for that movie. And then later, I also helped him do two more films. And also, I didn't take any money. I said, uh, sometimes uh, when I'm helping a friend, and uh, they wrote me a check, uh, you know, like uh, editing his, uh, his film or something like that. And I took the check. To show my wife, okay, uh, he wrote me a check, uh, 
So you have seen it, right? You've seen it. And my wife said, yeah. I said, it's a chair. <laughs> okay, you've seen it. Means you accept it. You already accept it. Okay, we are fine. Then I tear it up. <laughs> tear it up, so. We are, I'm so happy to help you. And the people I help, they all make money. But I keep losing money. I didn't make any money. <laughs> and my wife got sick. Got sick. He, she didn't even have money to see the doctor. He had to borrow the money from his uh, good friend and, and <laughs> to, see, to see the doctor. And anyway, as a, as a, as a, I talk too much. As a, as a, <laughs> um, although I have a, uh, Michael Hoy, a several film, uh, the, uh, uh, the Private Eyes, and the uh, yeah. the contract, you know, the Dotos movie. Yeah, I just and he uh, and then I I was uh, so frustrated because uh, I I still didn't give up uh, to try to make a movie like Lost Samurai. And then uh, I was so and I didn't know where to go. I didn't know what I should do for the next. And then uh, the boss came up to me, John. Since uh, you have helped Michael Hoy that many me movies, you, I think you can uh, take a chance uh, to, uh, to make a comedy. I said, oh yeah, oh I didn't know I didn't know I could make a comedy. Oh, oh in my mind, you know, uh, just a uh, Alan Delong and uh, you know a cold and never smile, that kind of image, you know. So. Uh, and then, uh, and then, okay, I try. And then I uh, only spent two weeks to wrote a script called Money Crazy. It's a uh, comedy. With Ricky Huey, right? And a comedy, and then, and uh, kind of like a Mel Brooks type, uh, very, you know, very extreme, you know, nonsense and, uh, <laughs> uh, Crazy kind of uh, action uh, uh, with a comedy with action. Mm. Uh, yeah, with with, uh, with, uh, uh, with some kung fu fighting and then, eh. Uh, so in fact, I only spent a very little money and used a very unknown as a as a Michael Hoy's younger brother as a as a star. You know, as, as a, a very little money and then. And turned out it's, it was a big hit. It was a big hit, and the people love it. And uh, but the people uh, usually like uh, the, you know, the talk show kind of a comedy, uh, the verbal, the, 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 uh, you know, dialogue. And then, uh, but mine is a kind of like action, uh, action, and uh, some funny jokes. But he made money. And then uh, all of a sudden, I became a uh, uh, comedy director, you know, and, uh, and I didn't know that. So, but I, <laughs> but I was still pretty unhappy with that. Yeah. Mm. So you you helped out Michael Hui on Games Games Gambler's play, and then on um, a film, The Private Eyes, and The Contract, and then your. Um, you directed Money Crazy um, and To Hell with the Devil, for example. Um, and maybe, because I've read a lot about how you, you were quite, as you said, quite unhappy with that sort of situation or being pigeonholed in that role. Um, but maybe also sort of on the topic of helping out friends, right? Like I, I know that around that time you were kind of involved around with uh, Cinema City and sort of convinced them to... Um, hired Troy Hark um, to direct some comedies for them as well. Um, and I think, thinking of your career, I think is what's really interesting is that you're, you were contemporaries with these directors, these new wave, Hong Kong new wave directors who all came through the, in the industry through television. But the way I see your career is, I, I see it, you, you're kind of one of the last sort of studio filmmakers who, you know, studied under, Studied under Chang Che, for example, then you know, um, worked in popular genres in that way. Um, I guess my question is: I'm interested in maybe talking a bit about that interplay, but also that relationship with Sher Hark that led to 
actually you getting to make the movie you wanted to make for a very long time, which is A, a Better Tomorrow. Well, that always a very wrong story. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, when I worked for the uh, for studio, you know, as a, and a uh, become a uh, comedy director, you know, because uh, first of first of all, I feel I was, I was so lonely. I didn't have much, uh, uh, have much of friend. So what I need uh, a kind of friend. Uh, 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 so uh, we can share uh, creatively, and uh, we can share uh, everything. We can, you know, and then uh, we can uh, even work together. And then the, at that time, the Hong Kong movie is still uh, uh, wasn't uh, good, you know, good enough, you know. And then the, uh, a lot of the people had making a uh, uh, the bad movie. So, and then uh, I was suggesting to the studio, you know, to, we should hire more young people, more young filmmakers, and uh, uh, to hire them to make the Hong Kong movie change. Uh, but uh, the boss didn't like to take the risk. Uh, at that time, the most uh, Hong Kong investors, uh, they all think the same, you know, they didn't like to try anything new. They were so afraid. And then uh, I said, now there's a bunch of young uh, filmmakers uh, uh, coming back to Hong Kong. We should hire them, uh, you know. Uh, so they didn't listen to me. Uh, they said, uh, 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 we have you, uh, John Wu is enough. One is enough, I don't want anyone. <laughs> so the one day uh, when I watch a TV, uh, uh, the, yeah, I'm not a TV fan, I just want to watch the news. When I switch in channel, all of a sudden I saw there's uh, two little sh pieces of Short, uh, it's kind of like a uh, uh, the uh, period uh, martial art film, you know. And then they were shot. It's a it's a knife after kill somebody, and then and the close up, and the knife, uh, uh, you know, standing down, and they see the blood, you know. Uh, is a uh, dripping from the blade and drop it uh, into the uh, snow. This shot was so amazing. Just, uh, just the shot. I think whoever can do this kind of shot, he should be a great director. He, he's a good director. So, and then just the shot. I that caused me to find out. Who, uh, who the hell directed this shot? And then, uh, and then I find out a person the name called Shui Hao. Oh, I think uh, okay, um, yeah. So uh, the next day I went to the studio and uh, highly recommend. So this is one director called Shui Hao. Now, now his uh, uh, his only chance uh, is uh, to making TV. Uh, television, you know, uh, thing, but uh, you know, I, I think he's a, he's a, he could be great. He's a, he's, a, he's a very, very good. And then the studio said, Sir Ha, oh, no, oh, no. So I had to uh, recommend him for two years. Nobody listened to me. And then one day we had met. We met, uh, and he was kind of like a, uh, Artist, you know, the, the, the artist is very artistic. He's a very really dark coat, uh, long, you know, and, the, and all black. But uh, they, they all have got a lot of hole. You know, they're kind of broken, you know. They got, you know what i And I told him, uh, wow. So this is, a, I, I like art, but I still like to dress, dress well, like, a, <laughs> because I, I, uh, I want to dress like a school teacher because my father was a school teacher. He, he always 
no matter how poor he was, and he still dressed very clean, very nice, you know. So uh, I, uh, so we uh, came together, come along uh, so well. We uh, we talk about movies, and uh, for God's sake, it had been for so many years. Uh, there she's the only one who uh, could talk to me about Fellini, about Fellini, about uh, you know. Uh, Godard, Stone Road, Godard. And, uh, oh, shit. Uh, because nobody talked to me of this uh, for uh, over, over uh, 27 years. And uh, because they, uh, the, the, the film circle, the people, they didn't really uh, know those, uh, those names. I was so happy. And then, uh, and then we have a beer uh, in a bar, and then we look at outside of Hong Kong Harbor. And there was a sunset. It's, uh, the sun, uh, it's, uh, um, it was so beautiful. And then we look at the Hong Kong Harbor, and then we both swear we have to make Hong Kong movie great. That's what we have said together. Uh, we have we have to make a, a, a uh, you know much better Hong Kong movie. And then I continue to. Uh, 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 recommend him to, uh, to, to several studio or independent company, and then by the meantime, I uh, I told him he was so artist, and his film was so artistic. I said, uh, uh, first of all, uh, an artist uh, uh, also needs to get enough food. You have to eat well first, and then. Uh, uh, to make your art, and then so uh, the next day he he dress a little better and eat a little better. <laughs> anyway, yes, and then uh, and then uh, there's a uh, uh, company called Cinema City. Uh, they just started, and then I helped them to uh, 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 create the uh, company, you know, to, to build a company, and then uh, and then I said. Uh, uh, and he also uh, wanted me to work for them. But uh, I said only one condition. He had to sign a, a, uh, a, a film director. He's really great. Uh, his name is Shui Hao. You know. And then uh, they were new company, and they, okay, they want to take a try and, uh, and hire him. And I helped the, helping him to make a contract. And they, uh, but they didn't pay him well. They just pay uh, because they were they were independent uh, company. I said, I told Cherry Hop, you just take it, take the first time, show them, show them what you have, you know. And then don't mind about the money. The money is so uh, is so cheap, you know. And then he just signed it and he did it. And uh, but the other investor, they only believe in me, you know. So. One day, uh, he so he uh, he can uh, 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 start with his, uh, to make his, his uh, new film, and then uh, uh, for somehow he got the uh, uh, over budget problem. I think we both have the same thing in common, and uh, we always uh, over budget, you know. So, and then after. Uh, I didn't know what he uh, what he's making because you know I uh, I was so busy at the time, and then one day when he over about two million dollars, and then uh, the uh, uh, it was a nineteen at the end nineteen seventy something, and then uh, I uh, uh, nineteen eighty, and then I and then all the investors uh, call me uh, to look at the footage, you know, and. Uh, because they they couldn't decide to continue and give him money or not, or, or have him to stop the movie. And then when I look at the uh, footage, because I didn't know what the, uh, uh, what the hell is the story is, and then I uh, when I look at the footage, everything was so new, and so the design and the, and the camera angle and the, and the, uh, and the scene. Work so well, and uh, and 
Uh, it, and, and, and I thought it, it could be, a, uh, he's making a new kind of a Hong Kong uh, cinema. It's a new way of, a, of a Hong Kong cinema. And then I turned to the other boss. I said, this movie is going to be make money. <laughs> For sure. I'm John Bull, you know, you just listen. To <laughs> and then, uh, but I didn't know what the whole story is. I, I just tell them, oh, they said, if, if John Bull says it's good, it means uh, it's good. <laughs> yeah. So they continue to give him, uh, let him to continue to, to uh, finish the movie and give him more money, you know. And turn out the movie, I, I, it was a big hit. It was a big hit, and he became a very famous uh, director. And and everybody, and the whole Hong Kong uh, film industry has found a new genius. Yeah. You know, oh, they were so happy. And and then uh, in Taiwan, he also had won uh, the best director for the uh, Golden Horse. I was some of, I was in the, in the uh, uh, I was uh, in the uh, uh, theater. I was jump up and cry because I, I have been trying so hard for two years to recommend this guy as a, you know, and then never, nobody listened. So, and the uh, newspaper said, and so I got the uh, award, but John was uh, more happy than him, <laughs> and more exciting than him. So, and then it turned out that we, uh, we are in the backstage, me and he and his girlfriend, uh, we hug uh, together and we, we all cry. Because it was been so hard because I, I'm truly like his talent. You know, I'm kind of like, I see myself as a, uh, I, as an ancient knight, I have the spirit of a knight. Uh, I like friendship. I like honor. I like uh, the, the helping people. When when you can help somebody, then the, it's a it's the most happy thing in my life. So, and then he become a you know. Uh, uh, the Hong Kong fly, you know, the, the, the people are so proud of him. And then he, he become very famous. And then I become down. <laughs> and, and I become a the, 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 uh, box, the uh, office poison. And my movie didn't work, you know. And then uh, for a few years. And then uh, 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 some people even say that I should retire. I should uh, not make a movie because I, I didn't know what the, uh, uh, what the, uh, 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 what, what is popular, what is the movie to me. Because all my mind is a uh, lost samurai. All my mind is trying to make a movie like, uh, and so you have to know about it. I, uh, Alan Delong and Sean Bam Okay. Then he came from the dark and then there's a little light because she one of his eyes, you know, and it's smoke. And then he somebody come in and he told he already got a gun in the hand and shoot and turn, disappear in the dark. That kind of movie I wanna make. <laughs> so when people say that I should retire, I should go back home and just look at a videotape, see what happened, what, 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 is, what is the most popular thing, then, then you should do. And then they, they give me very hard work, harsh work. And then they, they, I, I was so sad. I was so upset. No, I, uh, I, I can prove I still can direct. But they, uh, they were all my good friends, but they didn't, uh, uh, you know, they didn't uh, think so, you know, they just, uh, and Choi was so angry. 
He was so angry, and she was so angry about all those things. And then he said, and he told everybody, because all those friends, they were the, uh, the head of the uh, production company, you know, they have something. Uh, and then uh, they have good connection with the uh, investor. So Chirac said, let me take a response. Let, uh, I will help John to make a better tomorrow. So I better tomorrow, and then uh, supposedly he, uh, uh, he wanted to direct it. But uh, at, at that moment, he gave, it, gave the movie to me, and then, uh, then I was so grateful. I was so grateful, and then, uh, so, and then, uh, and then I, uh, I found the script. It's, 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 it's a very common script. I said, you know, I would like to put some uh, some film Melville's element in your film. You know, make so in fast character. Pretty much, pretty much like Alan DeLong's style. And then uh, he agreed. And also we had, uh, he had uh, some good idea. It's about trying to make a movie. Uh, we are using a family, the family uh, types uh, to make a gangster movie. It's, it's, it's a, it will look very unusual uh, for the Hong Kong cinema. So it means that the, uh, we took everybody in the movie as a human being. But what I like to outstanding is uh, Zhou Yunfei's character. Uh, make Zhou Yunfei, you know, like I said, a, a, a little bit like Aaron DeLong and a little bit like Ken Takakura, you know, and, you know, and a little bit like himself. Because we like the actor to play himself as well. So we using that way, we work together so so much. So, so and then after, and uh, I feel tomorrow got a big, big hit and broke all the record. And we didn't expect it. We just thought it's a good movie. But we didn't know it had made a history. So there's a, uh, I think uh, there's a, uh, I encourage everyone, uh, if you want to be a, if you want to make a movie, you better have a good partner. The good partner uh, both, uh, should have both same interests. I mean, uh, so both uh, can have a lot of things in common. Like, uh, we, uh, we only have, uh, uh, we only can share the, the, uh, the knowledge about film. We, only, we also can share so many things about life. Like uh, my kind of movie, uh, the character and, and even some story, it came from my life. I, I didn't uh, have a thin theory for myself. You know, I, I just shot what I feel. I just want to say what I wanted to say. And then I can use my camera, the music, the sound, you know, to, to express myself. But the most important is to have a good partner. Choi Hak, for the moment, is a, I think is a good partner, uh, a good producer uh, to me, uh, uh, for me, you know, uh, that the, <laughs> this, uh, <laughs> but that's I mean that's a remarkable story and 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 I think that what's so beautiful about it is you know he, he returned the favor um, and and produced a better tomorrow what I also find quite remarkable um, and and maybe we can get into maybe the the nitty-gritty of, of your style and the and the direction is that your your filmmaking style makes like a stratospheric leap forward between the you know sort of end of that comedy period and a better tomorrow. It's like you're a brand new filmmaker. Um, I I wonder what happened there. I want to hear about maybe how you conceived of of that style and how that style evolved throughout the movies that everybody now knows and love. Right, a better tomorrow, the killer, hard boiled. I feel like you were sort of sitting on an idea and then it really kind of 
exploded onto the screen, you know, with, with that movie. Um, I'd love to hear about that. You know, I never intend to to make a, a, a style or any style to uh, uh, to make a movie special. I didn't, I didn't feel that because I think that I, I first of all I, I, I have to say is a I'm a visual guy. You know, when I was young, uh, I uh, I was so shy, well, especially, you know, when I was uh, 15 years, 16 years old, and I, uh, and I couldn't speak well. I got a, you know, a speaking problem. So then I, uh, uh, I'm, uh, by the meantime, I'm so shy. I'm a shy, I'm a, I'm a so shy to uh, uh, seeing people and, you know, talk. So all, all I uh, look is uh, all I like to do is think. I my my mind keeps thinking, and I like watching. I like watching the uh, the painting, uh, the photograph, the beautiful photograph. You know, even though I was poor, I I could still uh, you know I could uh, go to the uh, uh, bookstore and the library. And I still read a book. <laughs> or oh, borrow, borrow the book and never return. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, mostly it was the picture books. So I have so many images in my mind. So, when, uh, you know, I'm so sensitive to, uh, 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 to see what I see. And I see something, then I can feel something. So I, 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 uh, I got used to the... Uh, Got used to uh, using visual uh, to tell the story, and have some kind of color. But I don't. I, I didn't. Sometimes I didn't know what kind of color, but it's color there. So I, uh, in my world, is so so many colors, you know. Uh, and then uh, and, uh, and then I uh, uh, beside the uh, visual uh, and then. Uh, when I when I making a film, you know, I uh, it's very naturally I say, okay, I, I'm gonna do this and, and that uh, should be more blue, and then uh, that uh, uh, the blue, and the background should be, have this and that, and then the, and then I and then I uh, shoot the shot, and and I didn't know it would become a style, and then uh, by the meantime the. Since I, uh, I love musical, I love musical so much. I grew up with a musical, so when I shoot the action sequence, uh, uh, believe me, all my movies, all the action sequence, yeah, I choreography by myself. Uh, even though I have a stunt coordinator, but I, uh, uh, I like to uh, uh, using my own idea. You know, so, uh, and I didn't let the stunt coordinator to control the the shot or the camera movement or you know, I, I want every piece of the movie, it all came from me. And then uh, I, uh, I'm pretty much control uh, everything. So, because I feel this is my painting, I like to uh, uh, put the, uh, uh, the color I like, I want, and then uh, so, and sometimes when I feel something, when I feel uh, 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 maybe some of the bad news and uh, some uh, uh, some uh, tragic uh, thing happen uh, 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 in my mind, or, or or some bad news hit me, something like that, and I would put it into the scene right away. Uh, no matter it's action or uh, drama. So I'm the kind of a uh, filmmaker, you know, I, uh, I'm i very uh, emotional or something. So especially when I, since I have been, uh, you know, a, a musical fan, you know, so I, when I'm shooting the action sequence, I 
feel like I'm making a dancing scene, you know, and I dance with the actor, and I dance with the stuntman. So, and then uh, when I when I uh, uh, deciding a action sequence, oh, at the time I, I, I was much younger, so I uh, I will imagine if if if, uh, if our hero holding two gun and jump up from the table and uh, shooting in the air, even maybe and in a in a 96 frame, and uh, it might be wonderful. So I we heard with a sign coordinator, and I jump and still shoot. <laughs> and everybody said, oh, it's so great. And the actor said, ah, I can do it. Uh, it look good. OK, let's do it. So so at the time, I flip and jump and run and, uh, you know, and, and fight. You know, and I, I have never learned any kung fu. I have, I have never fired a real gun in my life, and then I uh, and I don't drive as well. So, but I can make a pretty good uh, car chase. <laughs> so, you know, because it all came from my mind. It came from, I think if I can do it, uh, you know, some uh, some other people also can do it. You know, and by the meantime, I have seen that I also have start from the stage as an actor and director. So uh, when I was in high school, so uh, I know how the actors feel. You know, so I think uh, uh, my specialty is a. Uh, and my and also my responsibility is uh, I need to I know how to and I need to make my actor look great, look good, no matter man or woman. You know, when I work with the actors, I I, I usually like to, I just need to talk to them uh, for dinner for dinner or in a you know a little have a little coffee, and then I will. I try to find out what is a better camera angle for him. What, how to make, how to show their special quality on the screen. And then I look, I look at her, and I, and I even look at the hand. And uh, uh, some of the hands have a longer finger, some is shorter. And then I figure out uh, what kind of weapon he can put it. If you look better, and I, of course, I no need a short finger uh, person to holding a, a big machine gun like this, like a uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I am I'm very careful about this. And actually, like Tony Fan, he's an actor. He's not an action guy, and he said he had never punched a guy in his life. So, but I still can make him, yeah. You know, Look like Alan DeLong fire. <laughs> so, so I uh, that's how what would happen. Uh, in the old time, we don't have the monitor. We don't. Have, uh, we didn't have monitor. We, we just have a, uh, uh, and a very simple IMO uh, camera. You know. Uh, they, uh, those those small camera shot without sound, uh, uh, and the very noise is da 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 da, you know. This, uh, so we are using that kind of camera, and then uh, I think for the, uh, as a director, the first thing uh, uh, you have to know is uh, you have to know very clear about the camera, how the camera works, and uh, and all the lenses. All the lens, how all the lens work, I know pretty well. So uh, uh, I know the camera pretty well, I, I, and I know how much it, uh, uh, it can work, and uh, and I know, uh, and I can figure out some special way to make uh, the, that kind of a simple camera uh, work even better. You know, to do even better work. So since I'm so familiar, so uh, 
I, I know the camera, so I no need to 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 to, to, to watch through from the you will find her. I like to stay by the camera and watch watching the actors, watch the actor, because I love the actor. I love performers. You know, I love to watch the performers, and I don't care anything else. As uh, my eyes are is is a uh, yeah yeah it's always on the actor, and. Uh, uh, any movement or anything didn't look good, I, I will ask to do it again because uh, and the camera angle didn't right and I shoot it again. Uh, so uh, because I always feel the uh, uh, the actor is always is a number one, is a number one thing in the whole uh, production process. They are the number one. They are the very important thing uh, because they, they they get in touch with the audience directly. You know, they, they, the audience, you know, you see them, uh, you know, very closely. So I very well demanded, and, and, I, and I don't actually I didn't care much about the background and uh, the other side, and uh, so. Uh, <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> no, you're doing great. Um, um, you're also, I mean, you're also known for kind of um, shooting a lot of coverage. You know, you were mentioning sort of being very familiar with how the cameras work, how different lenses will get different results, also different camera speeds. And it's something that, you know, you're quite known for your slow motion, but also sort of that kind of camera trickery and yeah, I'm interested about that process of sort of um, coverage using multiple cameras, which, I mean, now is the norm for a lot of films, but never looks good. Like, I think, and but you found a way to sort of shoot with multiple cameras that looks phenomenal. And, and I also love this anecdote where um, crews, when you started shooting in Hollywood, um, crews were completely astounded by the, the amounts of, of tracks that they were laying out all day, like for dolly shots and things like that. Um, and the sort of very involved camera choreography. I'd love to hear a bit about that um, and how that came about. Well, uh, besides the camera, but by the meantime, uh, I must say I'm, very, I'm a very good editor. When I'm shooting a scene, even though a very complicated action sequence, it, uh, I already edit it all in my head. So I, uh, so that's why I, uh, uh, I create all, all, I control all the shot and all the action, because uh, in the old time, in the old time, uh, when you, uh, when the, the, the uh, when the kung fu movie uh, got uh, popular, you know, so most of the directors didn't know how to uh, shoot the kung, kung fu stuff, and then. Most of the idea, they only shot the uh, the dialogue part, and then the, and then give the uh, action uh, for the stand coordinator. Let them to drag and uh, uh, make a short list. Uh, you know, they shot everything, and then the, the uh, uh, you know every action director they have a different. Kind of style, you know, for uh, some like a fast action, some like a, you know, you know more powerful or something. Like that. So that uh, at that time, you know, the Hong Kong film, most Hong Kong film, uh, I mean action movies, uh, it's uh, it's all right. Uh, it seems to be uh, directed by two person, two different person. You know, the the drama and the action have never met, and I didn't like it. I hate it. And I wanted to, the movie should be incomplete. It's complete, you know, it's a complete story. It's a complete style. Like, uh, so when I'm shooting, no, no matter I, I shoot a drama scene, uh, I usually like to uh, use two camera, and uh, one uh, wider, one tighter, and uh, kind of like a, in an old fashioned way. You know, I like to start with a master shot, and then the, uh, the full shot, uh, do it again, do the whole thing again, and then a medium shot, and a close up. So it took uh, some time, to, you know, to shoot. 
And the action synchronized usually are used three to four cameras. And with a different speed. Some one some is uh, uh, fifty uh, fifty uh, fifty frame and some sort of ninety six frames, some seventy two, some uh, thirty six, you know. And I I uh, I know uh, which piece will put together and and which piece I'm gonna use more. So uh it's a, it's a, uh, anyway, it's a, it's a, that's a, the way how I work. You know? mm -hmm. I'm a good editor. And by the meantime, uh, I also have music in my mind, I assume. There's, um, yeah, there's this great anecdote where um, I think on the set of Hard Target, there's a Jean-Claude Van Damme who I think got annoyed at you because he was like, John, like, why am I shooting this gun wrong? Like, what's wrong? Like, why are you shooting me shooting the gun so many times? And then you had to sort of walk him through this idea that I'm shooting multiple perspectives and multiple speeds of you firing the gun to get the, the results. I mean, I don't know if you remember this story. But this is what you heard? I, I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I. I I I forgot it, you know. I just, <laughs> you know, the the, uh, the first time I uh, I went to Hollywood, or something I didn't. Because before that, I, I have never dreamed to uh, work working in Hollywood, and uh, I, I I thought that uh, it's an impossible dream. But somehow, since my movie, uh, especially The Killer, has drawn so many attention from the Hollywood people. So they, uh, so that's the reason they invited me to uh, go to work in Hollywood. In you know, in Hong Kong, the director is everything. The director is a, a tool, uh, not. But in uh, Hollywood, the director is just one of the filmmaker, you know, one of the crew. You know, not not a, uh, not like Hong Kong. Uh, since uh, I, all, I, 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 I also have a big influence on the French New Wave, so, you know, that the director as a tour. So uh, uh, when I was younger, uh, somebody in the, from my studio, they tried to cut my throat. I said, uh, you know, and then uh, I was holding a uh, kind of like a, a baseball bat. <laughs> Standing at the editor room uh, uh, door, you know, I should stand by there. If anyone come in, try to cut my film, I will smash them. <laughs> and then, and then uh, because this is my film, and I am the at all. <laughs> That's how I learned. <laughs> so, but in Hollywood. It's things are different, and, uh, I, and I, I never know the movie star can control everything. They have so they have everything, uh, final approval. They have the uh, the uh, uh, supporting role uh, uh, approval. They have the final script approval. They have the editing approval. They have oh I, I was shocked. Oh no, this is not my world, you know. But yeah, I won't. I won't ask about uh, working uh, with Tom Cruise. Or <laughs> uh, you know what? Tom Cruise is better. Is <laughs> it, be, better? Tom Cruise is better. Tom, you know, that's another story. You know? <laughs> so, and uh, for Hot Target, you know, it's, uh, okay. Uh, well, for the actual collection, and I uh, and I find out that uh, we have a stand coordinator. Okay. I said, you, you, you demonstrate some action for me, and uh, I, I, need, I need him to do the two kick, you know, jumping up and kick with two feet, you know, cha, and then kick. I said, no, we don't do that. Uh, you, you don't do that? <laughs> and, uh, we just hire the people you need, uh, hire the people who can do this kind of jump. Uh, okay, hire another people come here and do the jump. And then, uh, he didn't like uh, uh, 
what I think, you know. Okay, let me do it. And I jump like this. Not, not high, but like this. Okay, then was a, uh, and uh, the other thing is uh, uh, a Now I, I think uh, we are, we are, uh, I said, John, look at my arm. <laughs> so, big muscle. The camera angle here, camera angle here. That's what he liked. But Tom Cruise never asked them, camera angle here. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was fun, and then, uh, but my crew, uh, the, 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 the camera crew, hailed. He said, you know, how, how can he, uh, John, how can he tell you, you know, where, where, where to put the camera? And then they tried to beat him. Uh, they screwed and they unscrewed the, uh, uh, the, the thing from the camera, the iron, the iron bar or something like that, and tried to do some, some action. I said, no, 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 stop. <laughs> it's, it's okay. We just put the camera there, but I, but I won't use it. <laughs> but uh, fortunately, I, uh, I work with uh, uh, the very nice producer, Sam Remy, and, and his partner, Rob Taylor, uh, and uh, Jim Jackson. Uh, all those people, they give me a lot of help. Like uh, when I'm cutting the film, Fendem also cutting the film with, with the chief of the uh, editor uh, and, uh, uh, behind my back. You know, whenever I cut a scene and send it to him, uh, and, and, and they trim the shot, you know, and, I make a little change. And Sam Raimi was so angry. I, I was so angry as well. And then he gathering, gathering everybody, including the actor, all the editor, all the producer in the room. Uh, everybody, from now on, everybody let the director, Mr. John Wood, do his own work. Nobody can touch any film, you know. So he protect me and then let me finish the film. Okay, about Tom Cruise. <laughs> please, please, please. Tom Cruise is a man. Uh, he know what he's doing. What well, he know what he's uh, asking. He know what he need. And then uh, he's uh, very, very smart. And I must say that he work very hard. He's a hard working man. So when he uh, tried to ask me to direct a mission two, and uh, he was shooting uh, Stanley Kubrick the last film. Uh, Eyes and, White Shot. Yeah. Uh, Eyes White Shot. I was shot, yeah. And he asked me to fly to London, uh, fly to uh, London, yeah, uh, to meet him. I said, okay, everybody. <laughs> there was, there was after face off, you know, so, so they, uh, so I, uh, and, uh, and I fired, uh, and I fired to his, his home, uh, the, uh, uh, the place he lived, you know, for the movies. You know, and then, uh, he know I'm a family man. He know I love kids. And I, when I go into the room, I, uh, I saw his whole family was there, the two kids. Lovely, beautiful children, and then pay for the children and talk to me very casually, and then uh, totally like a you know not a big movie star, you know, like a family man. So we talk the uh, family man to family man. You know, he said uh, he said to me uh, he wanted to make the uh, uh, Mission Impossible series in a different director and a different style. Let's see, he wanted each episode have a different style. So that's why uh, he wanted a different direction. And he liked my style. He liked my style, and then the, the, uh, uh, I said, uh, okay, I, I think about it. I, I, I like to work with you, but I uh, still need to think about it. Uh, see, 
Anyway, and then the, when he come back to the Los Angeles, and and actually we live we we live in the same area, uh, very close. And then uh, I uh, <clears throat> okay, well, we have a meeting and a talk, and, and then they have changed so many script, you know, and he had none of them uh, satisfied, and he had uh, done so much uh, research. And uh, what uh, the story was about a uh, virus or something like that, you know. The, and then uh, he had his kind of research. It's that big, that many. And uh, I put on the desk and then uh, And then the uh, the, uh, the writer was uh, uh, Robert Tang. Uh, and then when he talked to me about it. Uh, uh, about about the storyline, and then uh, and then uh, he also talk about okay in 1941 and uh, the Japanese uh, 70 uh, uh, three, uh, 731 uh, square has uh, they have using the Chinese as a, a, uh, experiment uh, for uh, for testing the uh, virus uh, you know the the poison you know something like that. Oh, I was so amazing that he knows, and then, then, then uh, he he knows so much about that that uh, made me uh, so much uh, admire him. And then I uh, then I promised to do to, to the movies. So when I worked on the movie, it was so it was so funny. Uh, we worked like a spy because so many people like to grab our script. So the script become very important, and then, uh, and then uh, there's uh, uh, we are uh, we are so carefully uh, every time when the writer Robert and uh, Robert Town, Tom Cruise and I we live in the same area, and uh, I it's just a few minute walk to his home, and then uh, when Robert Town uh, has done a scene, they f uh, uh, at that time we were using a fax machine. And he faxed it to uh, Tom Cruise. After he read it, and he uh, gave it to a, uh, his uh, assistant. And then um, uh, an assistant came to my house and gave it to me, and he's waiting outside of the door. And, uh, and I got to read the script uh, very quick. And then I give it back to the, uh, after I finish, I give it back to, the, uh, to his assistant. And then, and, uh, and he took it back to Tom Cruise, and Tom Cruise got burned it. <laughs> and then we talk on the phone. John, how do you feel about the scene? Oh, well, I feel the scene, I did some and that, and okay, uh, and in general, it, it's good, uh, but a little something, and uh, maybe a change. Okay, oh. That's how we work. And nobody got a complete script. Only Tom and Robert Tang and I, and, uh, and for the crew, they got a script. But they, it all printed in a, on a, a black ink on a red paper. So nobody can uh, copy it. And in, inside the script, there are no dialogue. Uh, no one knows what's happening. Uh, only, only got a few, uh, a few lines. Uh, Tom Cruise get into the building. <laughs> after a page, after a couple of pages, Tom Cruise leaves the building. <laughs> so, okay, and the crew, what is it? And the studio and the insurance company didn't know a thing. They even didn't have a right to know about the script. And so that's, and uh, every day got the uh, paparazzi following us. And then I can, so I need to talk to the crew, uh, you know, verbally. Okay, now the scene is uh, in a church, in the church. So we have to build a church, uh, uh, not a big, a little small church. It had uh, gunfights, and then uh, uh, the scene is uh, uh, Tom and find out the, uh, 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 all the bad guys are there on the church, and the huge gunfight. And then the, the church got burned, you know. Okay, uh, so they, 
uh, and the uh, uh, production designer is a uh, is a uh, kind of like he he doesn't draw he didn't draw you know he like a uh, doing a sculpture with a mud so uh, so every day of my year, uh, I have a meeting his hand always in the mud <laughs> and then and then he you know and then he made a church like yeah <laughs> okay. After we built a chair in Harvey, we spent a million dollars, you know, in Australia. So, uh, but a church getting built, all of a sudden, the secret, the secret change. It's not a church. It's a lab. A lab is so much different from the church. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a chemical lab. So, oh, and it's a Oh Jesus! And then, and then we tear down the whole church. <laughs> One million dollars gone. And then, uh, and then we build a lab. And then, um, okay, uh, that's the final. Uh, that was the final. And then uh, it was fun, you know. And uh, by the meantime, uh, he's a uh, he's. We uh, everybody knows he's difficult. And uh, the po- the popularity that uh, they they were so much interest to uh, uh, to know how we work to how we can work together, you know we are, we have a both have an extreme two extreme uh, way for making film, you know, as a totally different style, uh, you, you know. Because a lot of, quite a few of the directors uh, couldn't stand him, and then uh, they left. You know, and, you know before me, already got two directors had left, and uh, didn't didn't like to work with him. But I can uh, st- uh, still stay with him, you know. And then uh, they would try to capture the moment as uh, when we have a fight or call uh, arguing something. Uh, they just want to take that kind of picture, uh, but we didn't. And uh, every time on on uh, location, uh, he sent his bodyguard to check the location. Have uh, how many window? Is there any window or no window? And uh, if there's a window, they will go to the uh, uh, to the uh, talk to the people. You know, the, can they shut the window? You know, when they uh, they were so afraid of some paparazzi or hiding. Uh, you know, somewhere, you know. So, and then the next day, if, if, they, if they feel clear, then we should. But the way I work with uh, Tom Cruise, because I uh, I think he see me as a uh, father figure. I, uh, I, I try to hold my uh, temper. I think I see him like a child. Not a, a stupid child, but I, <laughs> you know, it's a child uh, got not much of a understanding. Not much of people understand him. So, and he needs people uh, understand him and uh, like to take care of, good care of him. So when I talk to him, and then on the set, uh, he came up with some idea. He used to really like to say, okay, uh, I think, uh, uh, we shouldn't have another camera over there. He he used to talk to the, the other director. So when he talked to them, and the crew wasn't happy, the crew's all oh, on my side. So I said, okay, Tom. And then I bring him to the, on the back of the, uh, uh, on the set, on the, you know, on the back, and I talk to him. Okay, you the reason I put the camera on the, the, is to make you look great, you know, make you look beautiful. When you are walking on the side, and also it's a uh, slow motion. Yeah. It's a, it will, you know, I promise you, it will make you look, you know, uh, uh, very beautiful. And then he liked it. <laughs> but how, how do we face the crew? Because the crew is so, so unhappy with them. And then when I come out and I uh, tapping his shoulder, I said, we think 
we should put a camera there. And I didn't say I me. I said we both agree to put a camera there. So to 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 have him have faith. And I didn't lose face in front of the crew. And the crew said, oh, they were, it was a, they both idea. So, and then uh, that's how I would work with him. So he was grateful. He was, uh, uh, I didn't uh, fight with him on the set. I just used him that way to calm him down. And he all believed in me. And then they were just happen. It was just happening one or two times. And then, uh, uh, and then he just leave me alone for the whole film. And then uh, there's uh, another thing is uh, um, I wanted him to use a suit because he wanted to make the movie uh, uh, rated uh, PG-13. So um, I was suggesting he was using two guns. And he, at the beginning, he didn't uh, want that idea. He had a, um, like a, he wanted like a, you know, the first uh, Mission Impossible, you know, not the violent. And the people, people who, who like me, you know, like my movie, the cool, and told him, Tom Cruise, if you don't use two gun, why, why you, uh, why you enjoy this movie? <laughs> and then. And then they, uh, and then, uh, oh, they were my stunt coordinator talking to him. And then he, uh, uh, he said, I try. And then when he tried one, I said, it look good. Oh, look great. And then he looked at the screen, uh, the monitor, uh, look at the paper. And uh, oh, he uh, said, it looks so good. Give me more, give me more. <laughs> so that's why I say he like a child. And then, and then he used two guns for the entire movie. <laughs> and it's just, uh, it's so fun. Uh, and then, uh, so good looking. You know, the, and then, especially at the end, at the end of uh, fight scene, I said, uh, we, were, we were so frustrated. And then, how did we end the film? And then, what was the end fight? Uh, all of a sudden, he said, he liked Bruce Lee. He liked Bruce Lee and he wanted to do something like Bruce Lee. But my stand coordinator didn't know how to uh, choreography that kind of action. And then I choreographed all the action. And then how he, how he jump up and flip and, and, and kick and you know, do everything. He did it so well. The one thing is that he had never liked to use a stunt double. He always it, he wanted to do all the stand by himself. One scene very scary, you know, is a uh, climbing of the uh, cliff. Climbing of the cliff. But uh, it wasn't the original idea. The original idea was he wanted to jump up uh, on a 50 story uh, high, uh, you know, building uh, uh, in Australia. Yeah, jump up the, uh, for somehow, when the day was shoot, they, uh, all of a sudden, the uh, the local government didn't get their approval. They didn't didn't uh, let us do it. So we have to give it up and change. But we do need something. And then, uh, and then uh, somebody told me, okay, oh maybe uh, how about a clip, a climbing or a clip? Maybe we cannot do a jump. Okay, okay, oh, yeah. the good idea, and then. And then we flew to Utah, Utah to, uh, in the in the Grand Canyon. So when we uh, we find a crib, and then the car we can stop on the top, and then uh, he just climbed down there. And I realized, oh shit, uh, the crib is two thousand feet high, <laughs> and how can we put any protection? And we couldn't put any box or on a cushion down there. It's too high. I said, okay. Uh, we got a free stand double. Uh, two was a climber, the real climber. And one is, uh, you know, that stand. 
they both look alike, very much look alike, Tom. If you use them, you, you, you wouldn't recognize this, this is the stand double. And, and you thought, yeah, it, it's a real guy. But Tom, he refused. He failed to use any of them. He just used them to, uh, to uh, demonstrate the action. And then they, all of them only have one safety cable. I said, Tom will want to do it by himself. I said, no. I said, I, I am strongly against it because it's too dangerous. I know I, the, the stuntmen also in danger, but but they know that they got a skill. They they know they know you know how to protect himself. But no, you are Tom. You know, yeah. and he was he got tears. And he got tears very, and back to me, John. Just like a child asking, <laughs> asking him for candy, John. <laughs> let me try one. Let's try one. Yeah. I said. They all the stand up. They, they, they look much like you, you know. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's okay. I can use the wider saw, and then and we can shoot a tight saw in the uh, the similar rock in a, in a behind us. And they say, "No, he want to cry." Oh, just uh, he begged me, and his mother uh, uh, was there, and his two child there. Usually. Uh, whenever he do the action, he put a tie on my lap, uh, like like a grandpa holding the <laughs> what a grand, grandkid. So he was begging me. I said, oh, "No, I said, and then uh, uh, and I had the uh, stand coordinator uh, uh, guarantee about the safety uh, cable is, is safe, John. Uh, uh, let him try one. After his try, I I." I couldn't watch the uh, monitor. I just one of this. Please, no. <laughs> and I pray and keep praying. And his mother, uh, beside me, was so nervous. I, I, I grabbed uh, uh, I got her hand, and I pray myself. Please keep saying. And then after he did one shot, climbing, oh, okay. It was 2,000 feet high, and he had no afraid. And then, later, he wanted to do them all. Even do, did a jump, with a, just with one cable, and he did it all by himself. So we used our camera, and the, uh, also the, the helicopter uh, camera. Uh, I needed really close to him, and the blade, just in front of our face. And the blade, and, uh, you know, just come, 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 and he just. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Tom Cole. If you can do, and I, I think that they were the, uh, uh, the start of the he's doing the dangerous, the most dangerous action yeah. is from MI2, yeah. and uh, even though the motorcycle drive, the motorcycle with no helmet, you know, and that was his idea because he loves his hair. <laughs> Iconic. And he was sort of. He said, he said, in a drum movie, you know, he like a, a lot of slow motion, like a, yeah. <laughs> and uh, even though it's a drama, a dire scene, you know, the, uh, the, the close up, and, uh, and the, after he watched uh, the playback, if he see the hair, a uh, little uh, in continuity, uh, you know, no, not uh, so. And the, coming down a little bit. Okay, let's do one more. And he asked the makeup to fix the hair, <laughs> to fix his hair, uh, like the same as before. And then we show it again. So, lots of time uh, when the people are asking, "What we are waiting for the shot, John? We're waiting for the makeup." Oh, everybody know he needs the makeup to fix his hair. <laughs> To make sure the hair is uh, correct, the same continuity now. <laughs> anyway, and, uh, we have uh, actually we have a lot of fun, and then uh, only argue is uh, for the music uh, when we are cutting the film. 
he like to use the the uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the punk music. I said, uh, it's not the music for movie, you know. I said, uh, I didn't like it. I was so angry, and he begged on me again, you know. So, okay, oh, the, the same old trip. <laughs> <laughs> so. At last, uh, I agree. Okay, it's just use a part of this, but not uh, the, the whole movies. Yeah. But, uh, anyway, uh, and uh, we even uh, 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 promote movie together, and even uh, I uh, I uh, encourage him to uh, travel into Asia to do the promotion, and he all listened to me. And uh, uh, I still, I must say that I have. Uh, Really a good time to work in with him. Thank you. Um, maybe um, I'll ask one more question, and then um, we'll open up the floor for um, some questions. Um, you're currently uh, back in the at shooting in the United States. You're working on uh, two films, um, Silent Night, which is a, uh, a silent gangster film uh, that I think you've been wanting to shoot for a very long time. And you're also preparing um, a remake of The Killer uh, for NBC. Um, I'd love, I'm sure people would love to hear, you know, about those films and, um, you know, if you can talk about them a little bit. Well, uh, I just finished uh, shooting on Silent Night uh, two months ago uh, in Mexico. It's uh, uh, an independent film and uh, solid with a pretty low budget uh, because it, uh, independent film. But uh, the thing I like is I really like the script. It has a, it has a simple story. It's a kind of like, it, it's a revenge, you know, a kind of revenge story. As a, the son got killed and the father uh, on the table revenge. But it's a unique thing is uh, the, about the script. It has no dialogue. Uh, but it, it, it doesn't mean it's a silent movie. It's not a silent movie. It got the normal sound, you know, the everything, but just have no dialogue. So I think that this is a good opportunity to let me see that I'm a, I'm a pretty good visual. I think I can use a visual, my kind of visual, to tell a story and with, with no, without saying anything. And then uh, I'm uh, 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 pretty much the, like to use uh, you know some sound and some good music. Use, uh, try to using the music uh, to uh, uh, represent the dialogue. You know, when uh, when you watch the movie, I hope you also can understand what what the scene mean. You know. So I uh, <coughs> so I took a chance and uh, and. And, uh, and also, it had broke my record, my shooting record. I only should use the 40 shooting days to finish the whole film because we didn't have, we didn't have much of money and uh, much of time. But it also had trained me how to combining and squeezing everything in one shot uh, instead of uh, using multiple cameras to shoot different angle to cut uh, 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 to, to, to cut a lot of uh, covering shot. I just got a one shot and, why, and only a uh, couple of simple covers. And then the, uh, and then it turned out to look quite different from my work uh, before. You know, so and the actor, and the actor was so good. It's Joe Kinnaman. It's a, so, it's a great actor, and, uh, and, he, 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 and he gave his uh, performance. And uh, so uh, now in the whole production and uh, editing, and, uh, and I hope uh, uh, you can see it uh, next, next year. It's, uh, I'm pretty happy with the result, even though it was a low budget, and uh, but it got something. It got something to watch. Yeah. And then uh, my other project, I'm going to work with uh, 
got to be start soon. He said, we'll make out the killer. It's a, and actually, it, it, it can cause a, another version of the killer, not, 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 not exactly the we made. It's a, it's a one secret. It's a, it's a, the stolen first blow is played by a woman. That's new. <laughs> and then, uh, uh, suppose that the, the, uh, the project is directed by somebody else, but we couldn't find a, uh, a uh, better director uh, willing to do this. So, I, so that's why I have to do it by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, it, is a, it also is a pretty good story, but it's a lot different from uh, the uh, 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 the killer I, 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 I made in Hong Kong. So, uh, pretty challenging. And the other challenging is, uh, I'm thinking I might be pick a location in Montreal. And uh, I have so I've heard so much great thing about Montreal and Quebec, and then uh, I have seen uh, the uh, people have made movie here, you know, and then uh, it's a great landscape, and great people, and great cool, and uh, and the still and sound stage. So uh, I'm making a plan. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'd love to have you back. Uh, <laughs> love to have you back. Thank you. Thank you so much um, for all of that. Um, I'll open it up to the audience. If you have, um, we have about maybe half an hour left, so um, I'll take a couple questions. Um, you in the front. Um, I love your visual style so much, and I love uh, the way you use birds in your Chinese films. And a few of your Hollywood films, there seems to be a transition to the butterfly in. Uh, in, in the Broken Arrow and in Wind Talkers, you shoot the butterfly like you shot the birds. And does that mean anything? Is that, does that mean anything to you, you as an artist? Are you saying something? Because it means something to me as a fan, but I want to hear what you, you think the transition is. Oh, uh, the butterfly was a tribute to uh, a World War II movie, uh, the, uh, the World War I movie, uh, they're all quiet on the Western Front. You know, the last moment when he touched the front of the yeah. uh, there was a uh, tribute to him, to that movie. Oh, okay. yeah. It's not a, uh, uh, it's a, uh, sometimes uh, I would like to you know, make a movie dedicated to someone or some, some other thing, you know, and uh, like uh, I, the reason I made uh, The Killer is uh, just a dedicated to Sean Pierre Melville. And a Japanese director, I just had to pronounce his name. It's a, uh, yeah, make a lot of uh, Ken Takakura's movie, you know, so, and modern conversation. Yeah. You know, the way I use uh, the, uh, a little slow motion uh, in, a, in, a, uh, in a drama, you know. Uh, so it also was learned from modern conversation. <laughs> yep, um, first one with the mask. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Repeat the question. Yeah. So the question is about essentially um, what is your opinion on the sort of future of action cinema as it moves into sort of the streaming, you know, streaming sites, uh, and and so we see less of them in the cinema. What we see now in the cinema is more like sequels and things like that. 
and then the original action content has moved to platforms like Netflix or something like that. So do you have any thoughts about the future of action cinema? The future of action Oh, I don't know. I don't even watch uh, the action movie now. <laughs> Nowadays. Sorry, I... Uh, you know, I have never watched any of the uh, Marvel uh, movie or uh, Fast and Fury. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, it's not... Uh, it's the movie I... When I watch a movie, I no need to think. And... Uh, I was so dis I will be very disappointed. So I uh, and uh, by the meantime and uh, uh, I um, no I it, it, it doesn't mean I uh, I think it this is not a movie you know but it it's just not my type of movie you know I need to you see the action. Uh, uh, it's more of a release thing. Yeah, more. Of a so, and then uh, you can see, I, I think you can see uh, from my movie, uh, from my next movie, uh, The Silent Night. I, I, I didn't have a, uh, the huge gun barrel scene, you know, but, I, but what I had is uh, the real fight. The real fight, uh, the. Uh, uh, there, there were no, not much of an explosion, uh, not at all, no one at all, and then uh, not much of a gunfire, just a fist fight. And then, you know, because uh, our character was a, uh, he's a, an ordinary man, he's not a, a superhero, you know, so he fight with the gangster uh, with his bare hand. Uh, and all is a pretty long, uh, one shot uh, deal is a, is a, is a, it, um, will make the audience you can feel with it, you know. And uh, I always believe in uh, Kurusa was uh, 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 a saying, you know, he's saying uh, if the action scene without a human element, that won't be a good scene. You know, so he uh, like a, his uh, action uh, as a, also is a, have a lot of a human story, a human touch. You know, I I try to learn from that. So in the future, I think uh, in the future for the action, I think uh, the action will back to normal, back to normal. Now, now the the, the all the action movies. They had. They already go to the very, very extreme. Is that I don't think they can come out with some other better idea. You know, now they can people can fly in the air and uh, one punch you can smash the uh, the the to collapse the building. You know, I don't. You know, I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't think they can do any more with that. Uh, I think it will back to be better art. Yeah. yeah. So we won't we won't see the killer um, in space. Sorry, I, <laughs> sorry, I couldn't give you a better answer. Uh, yeah, back there. Yeah, uh, I was hoping you could uh, talk about your collaboration with Chow Yun Fat. Uh, did you feel that you immediately had chemistry with him when you were working with him? So, um, can you talk a bit about your uh, relationship with Chow Yun Fat, um, your chemistry, your relationship with him? Oh, um, to work with Chow Yun Fat is, uh, you know, as a, I, we have found a lot of things in common. Uh, like uh, when we shot, or we worked together in uh, our first movie, the, uh, the uh, April of Tomorrow. And then uh, I think uh, it both came from the same kind of lifestyle. We were, uh, we were poor, we, were, we have been struggling for so many time, and then we uh, tried to prove ourselves you know, for, uh, uh, for a long time. So while we worked together, and then uh, I, 
I wrote a whole script and I wrote a dialogue. When he read the dialogue, he said, hey, it also was my dialogue. I, I want to say the same thing. So uh, it means, uh, so we have a lot of things in common. And then, uh, he, and then uh, we also have a pretty strong will of, uh, you know, of everything, you know, and then we, uh, uh, and then uh, uh, we both struck with him very hard. And the other thing is that he believed in me, and then uh, I, uh, 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 he knew I, I, I can make him look great, you know, and I know uh, what he can do, you know, so that. I think mainly is that we have a similar lifestyle. All we all starting from poor. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, at the back. Uh, how do you describe villains in your movies? Sorry, say that again. Uh, how do you describe uh, villains in your movies? Villains. <laughs> how do you describe so violence or villains? Yes. Villains. Yes. How do you describe the bad guys in, in your films, the villains? Uh, which the bad guy? The bad guy like Joe and Fat or, or, or the bad guy like... Like Anthony Wong yesterday? Maybe? Uh, oh, he's really bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I, uh, I think that, uh, uh, the bad guy, you know, some of the bad guys, uh, uh, they all, they all human beings, you know, they all, uh, they also should have somebody care about them. And then uh, some of these uh, uh, bad, but they're not really bad, you know, like, uh, that's a, uh, I don't, I don't, uh, in my mind, you know, I don't uh, have that kind of a concept, you know, I, I a bad guy is really bad, and good guy is really good, you know. And uh, we uh, we also can find some goodness from the bad guy, you know. That's uh, it. It came from uh, 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 my uh, neighborhood when I was a kid, you know. I um, I have a I have a friend, and uh, he his his friend. Uh, and he got a pretty bad uh, parents. And they, they're all bad, you know, they're kind of like a, uh, uh, a, a little lower class uh, gangster family. You know, you know their, their parents are gambler, uh, and, they, uh, and they're killing dogs, and killing dogs and selling the dog meat, you know. There's a, a writer in, uh, Beside our, our door, you know. And then the the, uh, the son becomes a pretty uh, like a bad kid, you know. Uh, kind of, uh, always, you know, uh, uh, get in trouble with the police. And then uh, I uh, I always uh, you know go to help him and uh, hide hiding him and uh, to avoid to capture by the police. And then when I, uh, and then we become friends, just like my movie, just like my movie, uh, uh, Bully in the Head. Uh, Tony Leung and uh, Jackie Chan, they're both friends. And actually, uh, even, uh, uh, the uh, Bully in the Head, the first half of the movie was based on my biography. When I was a kid, I was like a friend, like uh, Jackie Chan. And Tony Lam was playing me. So, but when I contact with him, when I uh, uh, getting close to him, then make me know what about how they feel, how how he feel, how he, you know, he, he was so he was so scared. He he had a, he, had a, uh, he had some kind of a uh, weakness, you know. He was so afraid people doesn't pay any attention to him. And then I gave him love, I gave him, you know, a lot of uh, friendship. And then, uh, even though when the police came in and then, uh, and I lied, lied to the police, you know, and saved him. So he was grateful. 
but he's a very painful. He got he usually got beat up by his parents and uh, uh, you know, uh, and uh, usually the uh, they usually got uh, he got beat up by the by the kind of wooden shoes, you know, on the head. So uh, and then the, that made me feel is uh, in all the mankind, you know, they all they are some. Of course, there are some good guys, there are some bad guys, but there are some bad guys and we need to understand them. Yeah. So that's how I saw it in the film, you know, and uh, that's what I'm trying to make. And then, uh, there's a part of the reason I was uh, uh, educated from the Christian, Christian narrative. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, back there. Hi, John. Um, so he's a uh, he's a filmmaker and he's looking for advice to how to shoot a fist fight scene. What fight? Fist fight. Fist fight. Yeah. How how to shoot a fist fight scene? Oh, uh, what kind of fist fight? Uh, what, what kind of fist fight? What a gang or what a fight? <laughs> yeah. Any advice about shooting uh, fist fights? <laughs> Well, what I did on a uh, silent night, uh, uh, the, uh, the actor and the stuntman have been rehearsing for a few days, and then they, uh, um, they just, you know, <laughs> they just fighting each other <laughs> for real, you know, yeah. <laughs> fighting each other for real, and then uh, I, I didn't. I uh, I just told him, okay, you hit it, hit it, and then you got beside it, and I just slam you on the floor, and then that's it. And then I was using uh, one uh, handheld camera you know, to shoot it. But about the camera used for fighting, you know, I uh, I didn't shake the camera. I hated uh, the camera shake. Mm, the handheld. You know, yeah. Like but the hammer. The handheld, uh, we were using the handheld like a dolly. So very calm and very, uh, 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 you know, it, it, it didn't feel as a handheld. Like more like a steady cam. Yeah, because I, uh, I couldn't watch a movie you know, uh, with a, on a film I was sitting. I think, and, and even the, the, the drama movie also was sitting. I said, oh, why the hell did they say the sick camera? And, and, uh, I know. Why we need a good actor? Why we need a good actor? You don't need them because when you were shaking the camera, I couldn't read their eyes. I couldn't. I couldn't uh, uh, know what what they're acting for. And uh, and, 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 and using extremely close up. Uh, oh, were you shooting uh, the fish fry? Better not uh, too much of extreme close up. Just a medium shot is fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, and even though the Jim Coulter was shaking, 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 and uh, I can't read uh, what they, what they, um, you know, what they trying to do, you know. Yeah. So when I watch a, a, with a DVD, uh, a they kind of movie with a camera shake, I cut it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, in a in a in a film <laughs> in a film made, oh, I couldn't stand. It. Cut it. And then uh, when I, you know, so I told my cameraman, you know, every film, my cameraman, don't shake the camera. <laughs> and then, because I have a pretty good sense with the, uh, with the camera, you know, and uh, especially the dolly shot, and I know the water uh, monitor. When the camera move, got a click or something like that. Didn't didn't move, to, uh, and the last position didn't get uh, the pre the precise ang angle. I said, "Do it again." What what happened, John? It was a little crack there, and the last thing was wrong. Let's do it again, and don't shake your hammer. <laughs> and so. Uh, 
Uh, I, I really don't like to say shaky camera. <laughs> I hope that helps. Um, yeah, right here. Uh, did I? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry, I, I have a question. But... So, sorry, I just wonder if I, you had one already. No, no, no okay. No. Sorry, it was you. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, you spoke about wanting to, to go to America to realize your dream of, of making a film there. Do you feel that you did that with any of your projects? Like, is there, is there a film in your American experience that really stands out to you as having been the movie that you wanted to make without interference that, you know, that really ticked all those boxes? Uh, can, can you... Uh... Sure. So, sorry, uh, uh, sorry, my right ear is not so good. Yeah, so the question is, um, you've, you've often talked about wanting to, you know, go to America to sort of, um, you know, or talked about your American experience as sort of a dream come true. And the question is, um, was there a movie you made in the United States that felt that way, that was really kind of where you felt like you were able to achieve like a pure vision um, and that kind of ticked all those boxes for you? Well, I uh, uh, like uh, the movie, like Face Off, is uh, my. Uh, 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 it's a. Uh, I really appreciate that movie, and I. Uh, uh, I must say that it has got a. Uh, a good chance for me to uh, to feel free, uh, to do whatever I want. You know, and uh, by the man, by the meantime, I uh, I think the movie can prove we, even though I'm a foreigner, uh, uh, and with uh, 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 with a lousy English, you know, and, uh, uh, but I still can make a Hollywood movie. It has proved it, and uh, by the meantime, I uh, am so much appreciated at the. Uh, the studio treated me so nice. You know, I remember uh, originally the face of the uh, it was a sci-fi movie, and uh, and uh, very futuristic. And, uh, you know, the people can walk on the ceiling. You know, so you know, it's upside down. You're walking on the ceiling. So and the car is flipping in the air. So and I didn't like the sci-fi movie. You know, I just uh, wanted to. Make a, a human story, so I uh, suggested the studio, and the studio um, like the idea, you know, maybe uh, let it take a try, and then uh, uh, fortunately, we have a very understanding, uh, very smart uh, uh, the, the chairman, the studio of the chairman, so uh, it was a lady, uh, Shirley Lansing, is a uh, William Franklin's wife, you know, they they love my movies, and then. Uh, before we start shooting, and he gathering everybody, gathering to the uh, all the uh, 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 all the main people uh, from the studio and the producers and actors, you know, not actors, the uh, uh, and like Michael Douglas and everyone, yeah. all in the room, and told them, no one necessarily give any notes to John Woo. All I need is a John Woo movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, and then uh, he just give me a little advice, and they were sick. and the people said it's really un uh, un you know unusual. You know, usually the studio, uh, everyone uh, wanted to give you notes and change the dialogue, and then uh, and maybe the action uh, is uh, make some some kind of action, uh, cut down this and that, and then uh, 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 more. Uh, more concerned about the Asian market and uh, this uh, uh, a lot of things, uh, but he so she didn't let anybody give me a look. So I feel free to shoot it, and I was so surprised, and everybody surprised as well. So, so I got the freedom uh, to uh, change the whole script, change the whole script into a human drama. I just uh, 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 set the story uh, just ten years from now. It's not a not a two hundred or three hundred years old. So I changed it. At that time, uh, they they thought that it may, it it might be a little risky because they are so afraid. Uh, uh, the uh, the the reaction of the action fans 
because they're, they're action fans, uh, will they will um, they didn't like uh, uh, maybe not liking the uh, uh, kind of huge uh, human drama in an action movie. So uh, and then, uh, but he, but they uh, still like to let me take a try. So uh, he gave us a lot of money and and uh, make a film and a good team, a good actors, you know. And uh, so uh, and I uh, uh, I still uh, can do it the same way, you know, as in Hong Kong. And then I uh, uh, I so much appreciate for the actor like John Travolta and uh, Nick Cage. They were so cooperative, just they're so nice, and uh, uh, they did everything, you know. Them. So, but there's one point uh, we need to talk about it. You know, at the end of the movie, now you can see uh, John Travolta uh, after he killed a bad guy, and then he he brought the uh, the uh, his son come home, but for the studio. They didn't like that. And, uh, they didn't like it. They, 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 uh, they didn't let me to shoot that part to bring the you know the big guys kid home. He said that it may be the uh, uh, we came from a different culture. They thought the audience, the action fan, maybe unlike, maybe not liking. They uh, to see the helping the bad guy's son or uh, even bring the bad guy's son home. They didn't, the audience won't be like it. Okay, they didn't let me show it. And then uh, uh, we just saw the water and uh, John Travolta came home alone and uh, with a wife and kid hugging. That's the end of the movie. And then uh, we did a uh, screen test for the audience. For the audience uh, from the street, you know, that just in my the audience, and then uh, give it. Uh, we hired a service uh, company, you know. So uh, usually, we, uh, we uh, Hollywood uh, movie will do that, you know. So the, so they full pack of the you know audience. They watch the movie. It seems they like the movie. They like uh, every. Every piece of you know the action, the performance, and they like everything. But at the end, so we uh, everybody got the uh, uh, survey uh, paper, you know, uh, and see uh, which part you like and what uh, what movie star you like and, and what you and 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 and, and gather and see how much how the score is. If uh, it uh, it it score got a sixty. Uh, it means uh, uh, the the movie is safe. Uh, yeah, the audience uh, like it. Of course, if you get higher, it's more like it. if you got it below sixty, that it might be a, it might be a problem. So it find out uh, which part they didn't they feel bad about it. Which part they didn't understand. Uh, they didn't, uh, which part they, they they dislike it. So we have to be sure. We have to we should uh, you know, uh, change, uh, make a change or cut it out. You know, uh, they uh, cut out, take out, change the uh, part they didn't like. So when they look at it, they check every page. They check, you know, and uh, uh, everything. They all like it. But at the end, but the score and uh, the total score only got thirty-three points. It means way below 60. So the movie got a huge problem. Nobody know why. And then, uh, uh, and then, uh, usually we and uh, and the uh, studio, studio executive and the uh, and the police are all sitting behind. And then uh, we we didn't know why. And then, and then somebody watched the uh, uh, the uh, some uh, some people had left the. Uh, uh, the comments? The comment, the, the, the last comment. And then asking, why nobody taking care of the big guy's kid? <laughs> why? 
Why uh, the hero didn't bring uh, the child home? Why he didn't accept him? Why? So many people asking the same question. So the uh, the studio, they all apologized to me. That's a good thing about me. Uh, John, you're right. I said, yeah, we are come, came from a, a different culture, but I think we all human. That's a very human thing, you know. Uh, uh, to us for saving uh, uh, the abandoned child. So they, uh, they asked me to reshoot the part, <laughs> and the next day, I just said, we shoot it too short. You know, just, uh, and I John to put up, bring the kid home, and they, they all hugged together. I introduced this kid, and, uh, his name is. Uh, so after we, we, uh, we shoot the scene, I put it, put it back in the film. And we do the tests again. We do the tests again. So, and then the, after the movie finish, and then they find the final score, it's 88. <laughs> so, I mean, it had proof uh, the action fan, the people who like action movie. They also like a human story. Don't be afraid. And, uh, before I came up, why, one of the reasons why they invited me to Hollywood, they just wanted to uh, put my style into a Hollywood movie. You know, uh, before me, uh, uh, in 1992, you know, the Hollywood movie had a, had a very clear, uh, it's a, uh, have a uh, separate, you know, the action fan only watch action movie. And the uh, uh, middle drama only for the uh, 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 intellectual uh, audience. And that kind of audience never go to watch an uh, action movie. And the comedy is uh, for, uh, only for the family. And the action fans don't want to watch a uh, uh, you know, uh, family film. So, and, uh, but uh, in the Hong Kong movie, and, uh, uh, we uh, usually like to uh, Getting everything, uh, put everything into one film. You know, we have a, a good action, we have good drama, we have a sense of humor. You know, and uh, we, have, we have laugh. You know, so we, we can uh, put it all uh, all together very carefully. So they did. Uh, so they tried to do the same thing. Try to. Uh, Expand the mode of audience. So, um, and then the, we did it in facial, and a good experiment. But there's some other thing I really want to do for the Western, uh, because the, uh, uh, for the, uh, you know, there's uh, some topic I really want is, uh, uh, till now I find uh, we are living in a two different world, you know, the, Still, uh, uh, the people in the West, the people in the uh, East, uh, they both have a lot of uh, misunderstanding. And uh, uh, we should, I, I'm looking for a topic, you know, so a topic is uh, make people realize and uh, uh, we are all in one, we are all together, we are supposed to, we, are, we, we all need to understand each other. And uh, become friends, you know. That's, a, that, that's the most ambitious uh, topic I wanted to do in Hollywood. Uh, uh, it means uh, I'm going. I'm uh, have a. I'm having a project. It's uh, about a Chinese and um, an American, you know, um, uh, in an uh, 18th century. So they they work together, and then uh, it was a real story. And then uh, the uh, the Chinese work for the uh, uh, white men as a uh, uh, servants. Uh, somehow, after he uh, uh, retired, and he donated all his money to uh, to a uh, university to uh, to form a uh, uh, Chinese uh, studying, Chinese culture studying. So that's. Uh, 
So this carnival story, I'm um, very interesting uh, to do, but it's no action. <laughs> <laughs> the only action is that. Uh, uh, there's, um, so, but uh, they kind of like, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, so uh, I have so, so, so many thinking, so many things. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, make sure to catch uh, Face Off tomorrow, and please give a big, warm round of applause for John Lee. <laughs>